What's up guys, StuDog here, welcome back to some more GOAT format, dual commentary. Oh yeah, show me the GOATs. And, what do you know, there's a T for Timmy Turner. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy Turner. Oh my god, how many times am I going to be saying this lately? It seems like every single episode I say that at least once. So, we got Armor King here going up against Steph VW. So, yep, can't forget about the first turn draw. So we just start with six cards and not five. Gonna set a monster first and then play Nolman across out. Interesting. So let's see. There's Magician of Faith gone. And looks like both these guys gonna be banishing all their copies of Magician of Faith. Get in there. So Steph VW, he's just gonna set a T as well. Both these guys setting T's, man. Everyone's setting a T. Timmy, 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 Tom. Uh, Armor King, you and his opponent's graveyard, not a lot of stuff in there. Pot of Greed was activated to draw two cards. You know, the best card in the entire world. Pot of Green, he really needs to get a toothbrush, please. Clean those stinky teeth. Like, get this stuff off my screen. I can't even stare at this card without just being disgusted. So, Armor King, just gonna set a second set spell of trap here, and it's back to Stead's turn. He's got seven cards to work with. And let's see what he's gonna be doing here. Graceful Charity activated. Draw three, pitch two. Let's see if he has the Sinister Serpent. That'd be very, very good. Get that in the graveyard. Did he be pitching a scapegoat? Interesting. Maybe he already has another. And we'll be what will be the other card pitched? Sinister. Sinister. Ooh, Sakuretsu armor. So apparently does not have the Sinister Serpent. So the Graceful Charity, it was a 3 for 3, it wasn't a plus 1, it wasn't anything, just draw 3, discard 2. Ooh, but there's a Magician of Faith Flip Summoned. And yeah, the Norman across it only banishes copies from the deck, not the hand, so if he already had the Magician of Faith already in his hand, then congratulations. And he opts to go for the Graceful Charity instead of the Pot of Greed. So he wants to, to dig deeper in his deck. He's not just going to get the guaranteed plus one. He's going to be pitching to Koichi along with a Knight Assailant. Ooh, and the Knight Assailant could get its effect to add it to Koichi right back. So there you go. That's the plus one off the Graceful Charity we all know and love. Get in there. And now Steph going to be pitching a Thunder Dragon here to add two copies of itself from the deck to the hand. All the free pluses. He's got some lights and some darks in the graveyard. Actually, only one light and one dark. So if he really wants to, he can summon a Chaos Sorcerer or BLS. Contribute this Magician of Faith for a Jinzo. Jinzo, 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 please. No, he's just going to set a monster here. And he's actually going to book a moon, his own Magician of Faith. Don't know if I actually agree with that. He might want to attack first to get some damage in. I mean, you might as well. Unless that Book of Moon was a misclick, and apparently it wasn't. So we're just going to Book of Moon his own Magician of Faith and end his turn, and Armor King's just going to scoop it up. Wow. So his hand must be pure and utter garbage. As his opponent just has all the advantage. So, yeah, not looking that good for Armor King there in that first game, but good thing is that there's a second game, you know? And it looks like both these guys playing Thunder Dragon. Wow. Everyone gets a freaking Thunder Dragon, apparently. Like, holy smokes. Thunder Dragon isn't really a staple in GOAT format, but I mean, still a, a solid card. We're playing the Chaos Engines, you know? So, let's see, Armor King gonna set a T. Oh my god! That is three straight turns of people setting T's. It's like, oh my god, all the freaking T's. Seriously. <laughs> And what do you know, Steph opens up the Pot of Greed again in his opening hand, because why wouldn't he? Thanks a lot, Number Generator. Giving him the Pot of Greed both games, like seriously? Gonna throw his limited MST at the Ring of Destruction, and he's just gonna set two set Spell or Traps along with set Monster. So flip some of it to Koichi. These guys playing the same exact deck list? Like, really? Might be the same exact deck list. I don't know, they're both playing Dekoichi, they're both playing Thunder Dragon. So, let's see, Nolman across out, maybe? Get rid of that set monster, please. Please and thank you. So, Armor King is viewing his graveyard, not a lot in there. He could tribute the Dekoichi for Rijinzo, then go for BLS and wrap up this duel right now. 
That'd be pretty awesome. I'm just going to set two cards face down. And now what? Three cards face down. Not playing around the pro set Heavy Storm, I see. Oh, not playing around Malevolent Catastrophe. Even though I don't even think Malevolent Catastrophe was out at this time. And wow, we get to see a Mirror Force used on a Decoichi. Not really the best use of a Mirror Force, but... You must really want to protect the set monster or something. Like, God, man, really? So, Armor King just going to pass his turn and flip over that pro set Heavy Storm. No. So, Steph just going to flip someone his own to Koichi, and he must really want to tribute it or something. Like, I don't know if wasting that Mirror Force was really the best option. And what do you know? There's the Heavy Storm. And none of them are chainable? Wow! No chainable cards from Armor King. Yikes. I mean, he could have chained the Book of Moon, but that would just be stupid. No chainable cards. So I did call that Heavy Storm. It wasn't the pro set Heavy Storm, but it was... I believe he top decked right into that Heavy Storm, so... Congratulations. So, here's Sand again, Normal Summon. Both these going to attack for 24 here, and... Back to Armor King's turn. Still anyone's game. Both got five cards to work with. BLS, Chaos Sorcerer, putting some work. Does have that light and dark in the graveyard, of course. And what do you know? There's the Chaos Sorcerer. You can read your plays like a book. Am I reading your plays like a book? I think I am. So that's going to be banishing the sand again. He's going to summon this in defense mode. I mean, I guess. Let's see what Steph's going to be doing here. I mean, he has the tribute fodder, but I'm... Unfortunately, it looks like he just got nothing in his hand to tribute for. Well, we can tribute for the Thunder Dragon, but that would just be stupid. That'd be so stupid. So, he's going to pitch the Thunder Dragon to add two copies of itself from the deck to the hand, and now what? Tribute for the Thunder Dragon and attack! Ha ha ha! So, he's going to tribute. So, there's a Thunder Dragon! That was not a special summon. Get the frick out of here with that animation. The problem is, how are you dealing with this Chaos Sorcerer? Ooh, Metamorphosis. There you go. He's going to give up his Thunder Dragon to summon the... I forgot the name of it. The guy with the weird name. That, like, negates spell and traps, right? It starts with the R. It's like Razu, Razi, something. It's something. It starts with an R. I know for a fact it starts with an R. I completely forgot the name, but just hurry up and summon it so I can hover over it. Come on, man. Come on, let me hover over it! He won't let me hover over it. I don't know what's taking so long if he's lagging or if he forgot to put it in his extra deck. That'd be a pretty stupid thing to do. Okay, apparently we're just just sitting here officially. Oh, yeah. Taking a nice long look at that extra deck. He's trapped in his extra deck. It's like a, a time portal. It's like once you view that extra deck, you're just stuck in there. You can't escape it. <laughs> oh man. Well, shout out to Big shout out to Lexi the Queen for being here. And while we wait, we can still view this public chat. Wait, what? That is not six. What the F are you doing? With the same level as the tributed monster. Does five equal equal six? Oh, this is five. Oh, I thought this was six. Well, I'm an idiot. Just kidding. I'm the idiot, guys. Don't don't worry. Stew Dog's the idiot. So it, it was. I, I thought this was six. There's a level six guy that starts with an R. Not the level five. So here is um, Fiend Skull Dragon. Negate the effects of flip monster effects. Negate any trap effects that target this card. Okay. And BLS going to summon this in face up, face up defense mode and banish the Chaos Sorcerer. He's not going to take any risks. Uh, the problem is, you leave yourself vulnerable to Snatch Steel. And there's Snatch Steel activated, and BLS is going to be taking away half of your life points right then and there. So, yeah. <laughs> 4,000 life points just gone. I don't know why I thought this was level 6. I thought this was level 6 for some reason. God, I'm an idiot. I guess it is level 5, because I remember Shadal's played this when Construct first came out. And sometimes they'd go for like a Pleiades or something, because it was a light level 5. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Uh, I shouldn't wait to say when Construct first came out, like when Shadal's first came out. And Construct was still legal. Oh man, good times. 
Okay, so I'm in phase two, let's see. Steph, probably shouldn't have just wasted your MST just like that. Your one and only MST and your one and only Heavy Storm is gone. What are you going to do? Activate a Dust Tornado on your own turn? Yeah, right. I mean, I guess you could Breaker. A Breaker top deck would be really good right about now. Oh my god, Breaker. Summon that Breaker, please. Breaker the Magical Warrior. Effect, kill the Snatch Steel, get the BLS back. And he could just wrap up this duel right now if he has balls. He could just attack and say F it. Not even going to banish. Because Mirror Force is gone. I mean, come on. What do you have to fear? Armor? That's pretty much it. So, Steph, you're just going to gain back a thousand life points, but the problem is you can't deal with the BLS. So now, depending on Armor King's hand, he could actually wrap up this duel, which is hilarious. Okay, he opts to banish the set monster. And that is definitely the right decision. So there's the Knight Assailant. Just in a Fae Flip Summon, you got to add back that Book of Moon. Cannot attack with the BLS, but still attack with this. He's going to get in there for 300. Oh yeah, so pro. He could book a moon in his own BLS. Wait, couldn't he? Have, he could have booked a moon in his own BLS and then reflip some of it and attack with it, right? I guess he wants to use the book of moon defensively. He could have used that book of moon offensively. He could have booked a moon in the BLS and got rid of the snatch deal. He could have reflip some of it and then he could attack because it would just reset the target, right? I believe that's how that would work. So yeah, Armor King. Maybe he should have Book of Moon his own BLS. That would have been a very cute play to do. But I guess he really wants the defense. So it's back to Steph's turn. He's only got three cards to work with. And apparently this is a wind. It doesn't really look that windy. I mean, I guess. There's green slime in the background. It looks like green slime. And the walls were... The walls were ooze green slime. <laughs> That's my one spun spot. Oh my god, I can't even talk, man. It's too early. It's my one Spongebob reference of the day. Remember the hash slinging slasher that episode? And the walls will ooze green slime. Oh wait, they always do that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So wow, what do you know? That actually was Sakuretsu armor phase down. I did call that, by the way. So I guess it was the correct play for Steph to not attack with the BLS. God, these guys making all the pro plays. They could have been greedy. He could attack with the BLS would be gone he could attack with the bls in that night assailant but it would be gone so both these guys playing really really safe here in this duel and apparently the battery is low uh-oh what are you playing on a tablet or a laptop plug in that battery oh god big shout out to the low batteries remember guys if you're playing dueling book you might want to have your devices plugged in because it does suck your battery life i know that for sure <sighs> am I your number one? Am I one of your number one fans yet? I mean, I guess if you still count number one fans as number one fans, I mean, the whole number one fan thing isn't really a number one fan thing anymore. But, I mean, sure. <laughs> You've been in quite a bit of videos lately, so why not? I remember back in the day on my channel, the whole number one fan thing was like so amazing. It was like just the most greatest award ever now. It's like it doesn't even matter just because everyone quits or is just busy nowadays, but whatever. So man, it's taking this guy a marathon to freaking <laughs> plug in his device to a outlet like god man it's taking forever like, hurry up man it's not that hard get your charger plug it in it doesn't take this long to get a charger and plug it into the wall it really doesn't but whatever so there's Sukiyomi summon gonna be setting the magician of faith and he's not even gonna flip summon it because he's like forget it who needs the extra 300 he's gonna get in there for 41 and main phase 2 he's gonna do nothing and phase Sukiyomi back to the hand and snatch steel will gain Steph a thousand life points and it's basically just breaker or buzz you pretty much have to have the breaker of the magical warrior or else it's over you don't have that breaker of the magical warrior gg no re and it actually is gg actually wait a second he lost game once so this will go into game number three then oh wow 
What a comeback from Armor King. The Snatch Deal is just single-handedly winning in this game. I mean, wow, man. So, <laughs> he refuses to attack. I mean, what? They're not playing Man Eater Bug. I, I think you already saw the Knight of Sealant. I just attack with the BLS and wrap up this duel. I'm sorry, man. Come on. I would have just attacked there. There's no point of banishing. I mean, I guess. Tsukiyomi. He would have attacked in that. That would have set the BLS. Would have lost the target on the Snatch Deal, though. Oh, or you could just Book a Moon, reflip summon, and attack for game. Oh, just kidding. I forgot he had the Book a Moon. <laughs> I'm an idiot, guys. Don't worry. Alright, so this is officially game right here. That took a lot longer than need be. Going for style points, and it's just over, right? There you go. Game over. So, we're going to go into game number three here in this episode of Goat Format Dual Commentary. I believe every episode has gone to game three, except the previous episode where the one guy had to go to the pub. <laughs> you don't remember? I remember that perfectly. It's like, sorry, I got to go to the pub after like two games. So technically, every single episode of Goat Format Dual Commentary has gone into game three, believe it or not, which is pretty hilarious. So now Steph decides to go first, and let's see if he gets that pot agreed for the third straight game in a row, and apparently not. We haven't been seeing any goat action. I mean, so much for being goat format. We haven't seen one scapegoat activated this entire freaking duel. Like, seriously. And what? All three games pot agreed opening hand. Are you freaking kidding me? All three games. All three games. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. All three games he conveniently opens with the pot agreed. And what, like, what even is this, man? What the frick even is this? I don't even know what to say anymore, man. I literally don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> All three freaking games he conveniently opens with this freaking card. God, so much for this return from the different dimension putting in any work. That's for the second straight game. He's going to be pitching this with the Graceful Charity. He also pitches the Useless Call to Haunter. Those are some pretty good discards. I mean, both these cards are completely, completely useless in the current situation. So oh, let's see what else Armor King's gonna be doing here. We haven't seen any Sinister Serpents from any of these guys. There's a blind MST used on the set. Oh yeah, and speaking of his opening turn, he just set a T, you know, for Timmy Turner. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy Turner. Yup. Yup. So many T's, man. So many freaking T's. <laughs> So I don't really know if I agree with that set MST, or that blind MST rather, I mean you only got one MST. It's not like MST's at 3, and Twin Twister's at 3, and Cosmic Cyclone's at 3, and you get all that fun stuff. It's, it's like, no, you only got one Heavy Storm, one MST, and then like one Breaker, and then I mean I guess Dust Tornado if you're playing it. So there's a Phoenix Wing Wind Blast played right off the bat, like, he's like, nah, get that off my field. You're gonna give up the Torrential Tribute out of all cards, interesting. It's still a free neg one on that Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, though. So, yeah. <laughs> now, Steffi has all the advantage. Now, two cards in that hand are just useless Thunder Dragons for the current moment, but still. Okay, so it gets rid of a Magical Merchant. Let's see if he's playing multiple copies. Apparently, Steph is not playing it. You're just going to say, I don't play it, because um, believe it or not, when this card first came out, it didn't really have the effect of both players reveal them, reveal decks, right? Each player reveals their deck, yeah. Back when Goat Format was in its prime, it didn't have this sentence right here. Each player reveals their main deck. Um, someone actually told me that when I was playing Goats, so, yeah. So they don't technically have to show each other their decks, if you're wondering. And there's that Breaker Magical Warrior. That is the card that Steph needed in the previous duel. I mean, he's pretty much forced to use the Torrential Tribute. If you don't use it, then you're just an idiot. <laughs> and he's just going to throw the Delinquent Duo. And Armor King is officially out of cards now. So the Delinquent Duo is going to snipe out this card right here. Thunder Dragon. No, Morphing Jar. And then Steph's going to pitch his own Thunder Dragon. 
So a very simplified game, Steph has the resources, one of the cards in his hand is a Thunder Dragon, just gonna set a monster here, and Armor King is in pure top deck mode. Yeah buddy, just gonna end his turn, yep. Not much you can really do in pure top deck mode, you don't even have a light in the graveyard, so if you top deck into be a lesser chaos sorcerer, it is completely useless. Speaking of good draws, that's a really good draw from Steph, that graceful charity right off the top. Draw three, can discard the other Thunder Dragon, and then another card. So, what's gonna be the other card, Steph? Steph! What will it be? <laughs> okay, gonna give up the Book of Moon. Again, Book of Moon still limited on the present day ban list, believe it or not. Which I don't know how it's still limited. When no one's playing it. I mean, when's the last time I've seen a Book of Moon played in just the regular old current format? I mean, <laughs> months, lol. So, Graceful Charity played. There's the Sinister Serpent for the first time all match. You get to see this beautiful card right here. Before the errata, of course. But, I mean, Steph just touching himself at this point, and Armor King's just gonna scoop it up, I mean, he's just in pure top deck mode, he's just super nag, opponent has all the advantage, and just for time's sake, he is just gonna concede this game up, so, it turns out, when you open up Pot of Greed in your opening hand every single game, yeah, you win games, <laughs> seriously, Pot of Greed opening hand all three freaking games, pretty sure who the winner of this match is gonna be, just by reading the title before you even click on the video, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure we already know who's gonna win, so anyway, Thank you all for watching this episode of Goat Format Dual Commentary. As always, we'll be back in like two or three more weeks with another episode. And that's all I got, guys. So thank you all for watching as always. And until next time, it's been Stew Dog. And I'm signing out.